Hello, my name is Joe Sosnowski. I've included some contact information for myself. PowerPoint handouts are available by email for each of these lectures. This is the wrap-up lecture for Semester 2, Judaism in the Hellenistic World. Now let's begin with the Holy Spirit prayer. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit and they shall be created and you shall renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit instructs the hearts of the faithful, grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolations through Christ our Lord. Amen. I'll do a semester review primarily aimed at the high points of the books that we've studied this semester. Ever since the fall of the north in 722 and the fall of the south in 587, the Israelite nation has gone through a long history of domination by foreign powers. Assyria, Babylonia, Persia, the Greeks, and finally the Romans, with a brief period of independence under the Maccabees. And all this brings us up to the time of Jesus. Because of the exiles, many Jews ended up settling permanently in foreign lands. Their challenge was how to remain faithful to God and maintain their unique Jewish identity in foreign lands. Their greatest threat probably came with Alexander the Great's introduction of Hellenism. His goal was to conquer the world and spread the Greek culture, Hellenism. Hellenism is the word used to describe the spread of Greek culture, the Greek language, philosophy, religion, and art. Hellenism did influence Judaism. Judaism incorporated some of the Greek philosophical ideas concerning immortality and the duality of the body and soul. It also greatly influenced the Jews by forcing them to react against Hellenism. It forced them to confirm to take a stand for their beliefs in Yahweh and Yahweh's law. Both the diaspora Jews who were living in foreign lands directly under the influence of Hellenism, and the Jews living in Israel when Antiochus IV imposed Hellenism on the Jews there. All of this spurred the development of rabbinic Judaism, Judaism based on the law and not the temple. This semester, this semester we studied Jonah, Esther, Tobit, Baruch, one or two Maccabees, Judith, and Daniel, finishing up, finishing up our study of the Old Testament. These books were all set and are written during the period of the exile and provide encouragement and guidance for how to live, especially within the Hellenistic world. All these books, except Jonah, are deuterocanonical and whole, <coughs> are in part parts of Esther and Daniel are deuterocanonical. And again, deuterocanonical meaning they are in the Catholic Bible but not in the Protestant or Hebrew Bibles. The complete list of deuterocanonical books are Tobit, Judith, 1 and 2 Maccabees, Wisdom, Sirach, Baruch, and parts of Daniel and parts of Esther. Now a brief look at each of the books for this semester in order. Jonah is one of the 12 minor prophets and can be described as a very reluctant prophet. Jonah gets a call from God to preach repentance in Nineveh. Nineveh is the capital of the Assyrians, the hated enemies of the Israelites. When Jonah gets his call, instead of heading east to Nineveh, he boards a ship heading west to Tarshish, today Spain. God intervenes in Jonah's attempted escape. Jonah is thrown overboard, is swallowed by a fish, and is thrown back up on the beach. Jonah relents and heads east to Nineveh. The message is, God's care and compassion is for all people, not just the Israelites. A warning to Israel against excessive nationalism. Esther is a Jewish heroine. She is living in exile and becomes the queen of the Persian king. The king is tricked into issuing a decree that all the Jews should be killed. Esther intercedes with the king and the tables are turned when the king issues a decree 
against all of Israel's enemies. The lesson? If the Jews remain faithful to Yahweh and the law, things will be well for them, even in the foreign lands and even living under foreign rule. Fidelity or faithfulness to Yahweh and the law. Portions of Esther are deuterocanonical. The Hebrew and deuterocanonical versions are quite different. In the Hebrew version, there is no mention of God. Esther is also the origin of the Jewish Feast of Purim, which celebrates their victory over their enemies, a feast that is still celebrated by the Jewish people today. The Book of Tobit Tobit, a devout and righteous Israelite living with his family in exile, is the spiritual hero. But it is his son, Tobiah, who is also a hero, but in a more traditional sense. He is the one, accompanied by Angel Raphael, who goes off on an adventure, marries and returns to bring the cure for his father's blindness. Again, the message is, all goes well for those who are faithful to the law, fidelity or faithfulness to the law. And we meet Archangel Raphael. Baruch is traditionally the secretary to the prophet Jeremiah. He writes to the exiled Israelites in Babylon, encouraging them to remain faithful to Yahweh. In his refrain against idols, he reminds them, They are not gods, do not fear them, implying there is only one God, Yahweh. Next we studied 1 and 2 Maccabees. To set the stage, after Alexander dies in 323, his kingdom was divided among, among four of his generals. Two that play a role in Israel's history are the Ptolemaic and Seleucid empires. Originally, Israel was under the Ptolemaic control, but eventually came under Seleucid control. In 175, the Greek Seleucid king Antiochus IV came into power. He imposed Hellenism on the Jews in Palestine and forbade the practice of Judaism. He is the one who set up the desecrating abomination, possibly a statue of Zeus in the temple. All this led to the Maccabean Revolt. The story of this revolution is told in 1 and 2 Maccabees. These books tell the same story, but from two different perspectives. 1 Maccabees focuses on the Maccabean dynasty, the family that led the successful revolt and his style is historical narrative. 2 Maccabees focuses on the temple and its style is theological reflection. What is the meaning of the events? The revolt was successful and the temple purified and rededicated. And this is the origin of the Feast of Hanukkah, which commemorates the rededication of the temple. Some theology that comes out of 2 Maccabees from the story of the mother and her seven sons, we have, we have the theological concepts of the bodily resurrection of the dead and the innocent redemptive suffering. From the battlefield dead story, we have the ideas of the resurrection of the dead, the value of praying for the dead, and the existence of purgatory. And in Judas's dream, we have the concept of the intercession of the saints. Judith, the story of a Jewish heroine. She is absolutely faithful to the law and through her courageous actions, save Israel. She is seen as representing all the faithful women of Israel in the line of Miriam, Jael, and Deborah, and as foreshadowing Mary, who crushed the head of Satan just as Judith cut off the head of the Babylonian general Holofernes. We finish with the book of Daniel. The stories are set during the time of the Babylonian exile. Chapters 1 through 6 and chapters 13 and 14 are didactic, morally instructive fiction. The moral being, faithful obedience leads to blessings. And secondly, God is sovereign over everything, including history and foreign kings. 
chapters 7 through 12 are apocalyptic type literature. In Daniel, these are end time visions that need interpretation by angels. We meet angels Gabriel and Michael. When the Jews face persecution, we've seen them respond in various ways. Militarily, by the Maccabees who succeeded in gaining independence. We've seen them respond with martyrdom, a willingness to die for the faith, a response that in some cases led to the conversion of Israel's persecutors. Apocalyptic literature is another response to persecution. Apocalyptic literature reminds the people that no matter how dire things look, God, in the end, will be victorious, encouraging the people to remain faithful, no matter what, because in the end, God wins. This concludes my wrap-up lecture on Semester 2, Judaism in the Hellenistic World. Next week, I will start posting lectures for Semester 3, Early Christian Development, where we will be studying the New Testament books of Matthew, 1 and 2 Timothy, Titus, James, 1 and 2 Peter, Jude, and concluding with the book of Hebrews. Let's finish with an Our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the name of the Father,